The opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Eastlink Community TV, its sponsors, or partners. G's cooking experience. Welcome to Mama G's cooking experience presented by Eastlink Community TV and hosted by Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria here in Sudbury. Today's episode I'm going to show you how to do some no meat comfort eats. We're going to start off with a vegetarian chili, then we're going to make a baked mac and cheese, and then ladies we're going to have ourselves some bread pudding. So let's get started. I have here one of these old uh, time that your mom, your grandma's had. It's a plug-in skillet. This thing has gotten me through so many troubles. I, I love taking this thing on catering gigs. I love bringing it to people's houses. I just make the food in there and I bring it home. So pull it out of the closet, bringing it out of the basement, plug it in and let's, let's see what we can do. So, we're going to do the chili first in the pan. It doesn't take long. We're going to start off with some olive oil. I say about three tablespoons. Nothing crazy. Don't go nuts. So, Now, you can use butter, but if you're going to use butter, just remember that you got to start off with your heat on low. If your heat's going to be too high, it's, it's just going to burn and it's going to have that weird flavor. We're going to chop up some garlic here. As you know, you take your knife, go sideways, just give it a little punch. It'll break it up and take the skin right off of there. Peel it up. Three garlic cloves I think is enough for this recipe. You don't want to do two gar unless you love garlic, hey, put in six, put in nine, whatever is your comfort, but because my kid is only seven years old and I want her to eat this, she does like garlic, but not as much as we adults like it. I'm going to give this a nice rough chop, not too fine, making sure to take the end of the garlic uh, clove off. Also when you smash it guys, it does like a pre-cut for you. You know what I mean? It's pretty nice. Okay, I'm going to take my garlic and shove it in my pan here, which I have put in at 300 degrees or medium heat. I'm just going to turn it up just a smidge. Just a smidge. The chili in which I am making today, I have taken all of the beans out of cans. But Mama G, why would you do that? you know, when you're losing some of your nutrition. At the end of the day, guys, I'm looking to do something quick. I'm looking to make something healthy. And I don't have a lot of time to sit there. And if I pre-plan it, great. I would use the other beans. And I'd probably use my Instapot to get it done. So cut your onion, small dice. If you haven't purchased yourself a real chef knife, please spend the time, go out there, get yourself a knife. You can go to Stop Supply, you can come here at Kitchen, we have a kitchen area over here that we have some nice knives, but use, get yourself a good knife, okay? It's worth it, you're gonna get frustrated with the other knives, juice ain't worth the squeeze. So, let's talk about the beans in which I have taken out of the cans. I have picked five beans today. The first bean I picked was a red kidney bean. Then I picked a black turtle bean. I picked a Romano bean. And I have um, some black eyed peas over here. The only reason why the black eyed pea still has its liquid in the can that we're going to be putting into the chili is that we want that that sticky, um, thick juice to thicken up and bind our, our chili together, not to be watery, right? Uh, as we all know, that happens. Uh, so we're gonna put this in here. 
right? We got our onions in here. We're gonna stir it around. So in the pan right now, we have garlic, onions, and olive oil. This, my friends, is where you put in your spices, okay? You want your spices to cook. You want the oil to get your, your herbs, your spices all activated. So this one here, I'm putting in a good tablespoon of smoked paprika, which you can get here. The smell is amazing. It gives it like a, like a almost campfirey flavor, but not, not too much. I'm gonna put in some ground fennel because it is the flavor of the year. We can grow it here. It smells delicious. It's good for you. And it's a nice flavor. I've got some chili powder. I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of that. Mmm, just smells so good already. I'm gonna put in some oregano. Probably a good tablespoon. And lastly, I'm gonna put in some parsley. Cause parsley should be in everything, honestly. I love it. Between fennel and parsley, they're my thing. I'm gonna put it in two good heapings of, um, of the parsley. Gonna mix it around. This is easy. You get all this in your pan. Okay, you coat your onions in it. The smell, the aromatics. Now don't sit there and cook it till your onions become soft. That's not what you're trying to do. So, I took one can of peaches and cream corn and one can of sliced canned mushrooms. Shout out goes out to Richard Clements of the prestigious Ambassador Hotel who taught me how to use canned mushrooms because I feel like there's no use for them in the world. So, but when we put them in stews, when we put them in chilies, when we put them in sauce, they're not super absorbent of all of our liquids. They give a nice flavor and a nice taste. Okay, you get those in, mix them in. Now I've drained, I have drained, you can see underneath, I have drained the cans, but I did not rinse the beans. You don't want to rinse the beans as you still want the stickiness of the beans on the outside. Plop it all into your pan. Take your one can that has the liquid, dump it in. Add yourself one liter or 500 milliliters, I apologize, of tomato sauce or tomato juice. One little squirt of probably two tablespoons worth of tomato paste. And that's basically it, guys. You throw it all in a pan and you let it do its own thing. And within 45 minutes, you'll have a beautiful, flavorful chili that's good to go. And you can freeze this for up to two months. Okay guys, so I've added all of my ingredients. I'm gonna add some more water. We'll be right back and I'm gonna show you how to make some mac and cheese. We're just gonna put this to the side, let it cook, and we'll see the magic once it's all done. Mama's cooking experience. Kitchen and recipe ingredients provided by Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria, 815 Lawrence Street, Sudbury. Welcome back to Mama G's Cooking Experience, brought to you by Eastlink Community TV. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the mac and cheese. So, you're gonna boil yourself off some pasta. Here's some pro tips. If you're gonna make a sauce to go with it, put some salt in your water. 
Why do you put salt in your water? It's going to flavor your pasta. Therefore, you're not going to want to pick up the salt shaker because you're feeling like, hey, my pasta doesn't have any flavor. So I've boiled our pasta. Oh, pro tip number two. Use a big pot. Use lots of water. Don't be stingy. You want the pasta to move around. You want the water to go through all of the holes in the crevices so that everything is cooked and it's not stuck together inside the pan. So I have boiled off our pasta. I'm going to strain it out. And I'm going to leave it in the strainer until our sauce is ready in the same pot. OK, empty pot, nice and steamy. Going to put it back on. Going to put it on medium, and then we're going to start making our sauce. The base of our sauce is going to be started off with a roux, which is flour and butter mixed together, where it forms almost like a, a Play-Doh consistency. So I have about a half a cup of butter that I'm going to put into the pot right now. I'm going to grab myself a spatula, because it's going to be easiest, and I'm also going to grab a whisk because once we start putting in the cold milk into the roux you're going to want to use it the whisk to break up all the parts do not use hot milk do not use anything room temperature you want nice fresh cold milk or cream for your sauce that way it cools the butter down you'll be able to break it up it's a better scenario You'll get clumps if you do it with anything hot. So nice and melted here. No color in the butter. So I'm going to just put in a little bit of flour at a time. I have pre-measured one cup worth of flour. But like I said, it depends. See here? It's like a little gooey. You don't want gooey. Just put in a little bit at a time. Be patient with it. You want the flour and the butter to cook a little bit. Form a little bit of a, a thin layer of cooked flour on the bottom of the pan here. There we go. It's going to take the full cup. Perfect. There we go, looks like Play-Doh. Perfect. Take my whisk, clean off all that stuff. So now you can see what it really looks like. Okay, I'm gonna take my cold milk, give it a good shake. You can use cream here, but I don't suggest it because it's going to make your sauce too thick. It's going to be too rich. After a portion, you might feel a little heavy and gross. It's not very comforting. Okay, so you're going to add your milk in. See the nice sizzle? I say put in about two cups to start off with. Whisk it around and start breaking all the chunks of the flour and the fat together. What kind of flour would I use? You can use all-purpose flour. You can use a pastry flour. Try to avoid the heavier whole wheat flours as it's going to leave uh, little fibers of the wheat and you'll have it, uh, your sauce will be like grainy, you know? You don't really want that. Now you could do 50% milk and 50% uh, stock if you want. You can use vegetable stock. You can use chicken stock. Uh, I've never made it with beef stock or with pork. So I'm assuming it can be done, but you'll just have a different flavor profile. Not what you're really looking for in a mac and cheese. So we're just gonna break up the milk, break up the balls of flour, of roux, excuse. There we go. All in all, I say you're probably going to have to use about one and a half, yeah, probably about one to one and a half liters of milk. 
Now I cooked one package, which is uh, about a pound's worth of pasta noodles. And you can use any pasta noodle that you want, guys. Like there's no, there's nothing for that. So once this is all broken up, you're gonna start adding your cheese. I suggest using a sharp cheddar as the sharp cheddar has a little bit more of a, a flavor and when it's mixed with the roux, the roux can sometimes dull the flavor down and that's not really something you want. There we go. Today I'm using a Thornlow grass-fed cheddar, um, sharp cheddar. Why would I pay for the extra money, why would I pay the extra money for grass-fed cheese? Well, let me tell you, when a cow is sitting out in the middle of the field, it's getting natural vitamin D. It doesn't have to be eating the enriched grains inside the barn. The other thing too is grass gives cows a natural omega-3 fatty acid. So it's gonna show itself in the product of the cheese. You know, you're gonna taste it. You know, a long time ago, there was a commercial, not to pout it, but uh, J.M. Schneider had a commercial that it says, you can taste the difference that quality makes. And you know what? It's so true. It's so true. So in this bowl here, I have grated up one block, so 450 grams of cheddar, which I'm only going to use half because I want the other half to go on top. I'm gonna add that. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. And I'm gonna use white pepper. Why white pepper? You use white pepper because when you go to use dark pepper, you'll have flex in it. You don't want, you want it to be pretty. Okay, so you're gonna use about half a teaspoon's worth of white pepper. Remember guys, white pepper definitely tastes more peppery than black pepper. So all you're going to do is you're just going to add your cheese, whisk it up, add your noodles, put it in your casserole dish, add your cheese on top and bake it off. See, it melted in nice and good. Take your noodles, drop them in, Stir it up. Nice, cheesy, thick, beautiful, smells amazing. And we'll be right back with the finished product of mac and cheese. And I'm gonna show you how to make some cost-effective dessert bread pudding. Mama's cooking experience. Kitchen and recipe ingredients provided by Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria, 815 Lawrence Street, Sudbury. Welcome back to Mama G's Cooking Experience, and today we're at the No Meat Comfort Eats. So I'm just going to show you a quick recipe uh, to do with your leftover bread and you're hungry for something sweet, but you don't feel like going out, this is what to do. So what I've done is I've pre-cut half a loaf of my bread and I've got that ready to go. I have a bowl here ready that I'm going to dump it all in. But first I want to give you a pro tip. How to do grease a pan without having a specialty brush and melting the, pot, the fat. Just don't do it. Take a paper towel, take a chunk of your butter into your thing, and just rub it around. Now I keep a chunk of paper towel in a plastic bag in my fridge for said purposes all the time. So all I do is I crunch up my paper, put it in a plastic bag, and I use it solely just for rubbing around on my pans. So my pan is nice and greased up. I'm gonna plop my four cups of diced bread cubes in my bowl. I'm gonna add three tablespoons of brown sugar. Now you can add any kind of sugar in which you like. 
You can use the maple sugar, you can use brown sugar, you can use white sugar, whatever tickles your fancy. I'm gonna add some of my spices. I'm gonna do some fresh ground nutmeg and some fresh ground cinnamon. Not crazy, so the nutmeg. Take your micro zester and do about a quarter of the nutmeg nut. It smells so good. Oh my goodness. Same thing with a fresh cinnamon stick. You can use the pre-ground, that's fine. You'll just have to use a little bit more than what I'm using here. You probably could use a half a teaspoon of each in here. You don't want too much because you don't want it to be too strong. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. There we are, move those over. As you see, ooh, I'm sorry. As you see, I'm just gonna mix this up a little bit put it to the side. I've cracked seven eggs in here. I'm just gonna whisk them up. I'm gonna add about a quarter teaspoon of vanilla essence. We sell the nice organic one here at Seasons Pharmacy. Now I'm gonna put in about a half a cup of cream, 10% cream, and about a half a cup of my 3% milk. Whisk it together. Looks a little bit, I'm gonna put a little bit more cream in there. That looks better. Move it over. You should have about three cups of product. Dump it all over your bread, okay? Nice and easy. Give it a swirl. Make sure all of your bread is nice and coated. Fully, fully, fully. Transfer it over to your grease-lined dish. Make sure it's nice and even. Cover it up in tin foil and pop it in the oven at 350 degrees for a solid 45 minutes with the foil on. Now that everything's come out of the oven, the bread pudding is nicely solidified with the egg mixture. The mac and cheese has a nice crust with the cheese top after it's been baked. And the chili is a nice consistency where it's still, you can tell that it's not dry, it's still nice and moist. You'll also say, hey, Mama G, you didn't really put any chili flakes or anything in there. You're right, because not everybody likes the spicy chili. So my suggestion is to always have your hot sauce or your hot chili oil on the side. Just make it to taste. That way the whole group can enjoy it by themselves. But if it's just for you and you want to make sure that it's nice and spicy, when I was at that point where I was putting in all of my herbs and spices with the butter so that I got it activated, that's where I would have put it in. Now, just to finish off here with the bread pudding, what I would normally do is I would cut a piece out because it's not that sweet. You don't want it to be that sweet. You're looking more of a French toast bake type of deal. So I would take a piece out and grab my favorite jam, which lately it's this Haskap jelly from that Belle Vie Farms. She's amazing, her stuff. It's beautiful, it's local and you can get it at Seasons Pharmacy. I would just drip some on there and just serve it like that. I would like to take the time to thank Eastlink and to thank Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria for the space, for the opportunity, as well as I would love to thank Maddie's from Maddie Sews for this beautiful apron in which I was able to do my show today. Thank you for coming to Mama G's Cooking Experience here on Eastlink TV. I appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you in our next episode.